the point that needs to be borne in mind here really is that the processes of Arabization and Islamization were taking place in the northern part of the continent. You began to see the emergence of towns and cities and cultures, and North Africa became part of that global Islamic network. And of course, Muslims were beginning to import silk into the region from China through the Silk Route. They were beginning to bring spices, as I said earlier, from the East, India, and a host of other trading items were coming from the eastern part of the region. And then at the same time, as the Muslims consolidated their power, not of the Sahara, they also built on the trade routes that were established by the Carthaginians and the Romans in the sub-Saharan trade. Because the Carthaginians were already trading with the people south of the Sahara long before the Arabs came on the scene. But one thing that the Arabs were able to do more successfully than any other group was the fact that the Arabs benefited from their <coughs> civilizational predecessors. In the context of North African history and in terms of the Trans-Saharan trade, two things become very important. One is that the Arab, the Romans, had much earlier introduced the humpback camel what is known as technically the dromedarian camel, as the technical name for it, or the humpback camel. The Romans had already introduced that into North Africa. But the Romans were not desert people, so they couldn't make much use of the humpback camel to penetrate the Sahara. History would reserve that role for the Arabs, who will use the humpback camel more skillfully and effectively to penetrate the Sahara thereby creating that bridge between sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa. The second point that needs to be borne in mind with regard to the historical expansion of Islam in North Africa and then through the trans-Saharan routes into sub-Saharan regions of Africa was the fact that when the Arabs came into the region, they were able to use the knowledge they have acquired in the Mediterranean world, I mean, in Arabia, to their advantage, because they had these long journeys, caravans, which were established, something that the Romans didn't have. So when the Arabs came, they were able now, not only to use the humpback camel, which the Romans had already introduced, but building on this Roman legacy, they were able to benefit from their long history of long distant trade with camels. And of course, this would prepare the stage for the expansion of Islam south of the Sahara. And this is one of the points that needs to be emphasized. It is true that Islam expanded into the areas not of Arabia by conquest. And it is also true that Islam spread across North Africa by conquest. However, Islam did not spread south of the Sahara by conquest. The Arabs did not conquer Africa south of the Sahara and created an Islamic civilization. No, you have a number of processes by which Islam would move from North Africa to the sub-Saharan region of Africa. This is where you have the five agencies by which Islam was spread south of the Sahara. 